And a really cool tip with that is do it without the rod, without the line. Because when you've got a line on there, your muscle takes over and your urge to throw your string out there takes over and, and, and things happen. So you can take the butt section of a rod, you can take the bottom section of a one-handed rod, you can take the butt section of a two-handed or spay rod, and you can just slowly develop that move. Just slowly to start with, just this loading move and a power move. In the power move, you'll notice there's a thing called a wedge, or I call this the wedge, this wedge shape. The power move is the closure of the wedge. That makes the rod stop firmly, jumps all the energy off the flex loader rod and, and kicks the energy out there. So the power move is this nice little wedge closure. If you finish like this, wow, you've lost all that potential rotational force into the cast. So make sure you close. And you don't have to hit your forearm. Some people like to pull it in their bad body here. That's style. I don't give a hoot about style. I'm worried about physics of cast and how it loads. So I don't worry if you do this or this or this if you want to. Or this. Doesn't matter. Physics. So the rod must be pinned back and then closes over at the last second. You can do that with a stick when you're out walking the dog. Hey Fido. Oh hang on. Fido wait. You know, just develop that loaded rod pin back. So that's a cool thing on the forward stroke. Well, then you can put your rod back together again. Another one of the... Um, there's three major things I like to kind of... What I call the three basics uh, of spade casting. One is that forward stroke. The second is what I call point P. Point P is just a, I don't ask what P, point P stands for, it's just what it is. Uh, point P is a, a spot where the line hanging down touches the water, that little ripply thing. That spot's point P. And it moves, you know, if I do that, well, point P's there in the orange. If I do that, point P's in that creamy line. If I do that, point P's over there. So it moves around. One of the most useful little tips, roll, roll casting or spade casting, is to imagine that there's an orange line off your knees, right out there. And as you come back, you look at point P in relation to that orange line, and if your forward stroke has point P in front of the line, you'll find that the cast is silent. There's no noise. It's very efficient. Every move you make into flexing the rod and unloading the rod is getting your line out there. But you get this little muscle memory thing I talked about at the beginning. You give the line a pop. And that's what happens. People try and come back and they get a little pop. And point P drops in the water behind them. You hear this horrible noise. The line doesn't go anywhere. And that's because point P went behind you. So, however you do it, doesn't matter how, however you do it, just observe it and make sure even on your roll cast, you're making your cast with that point piece in front of the orange line. And the orange line is always 90 degrees to your target. So if my target's that tree, my orange line will be this concrete piece here. So the, the orange line changes. So that point piece is a very useful tip. And then the last useful tip I call the train tracks. Um, the train tracks are just... Uh, Basically, your fly line that's lying on the water is one train track. And where you aim your forward stroke is your other train track. They're always parallel. So, if my line is facing down here, my forward stroke is down here. What you don't ever want to do is you don't want to cross your train track. If my, like if I'm going to go over towards the golf course there, I'm going to cross this. That happens. And equally, if your line is already at the golf course and you go to the clubhouse, it doesn't go very well. So a roll cast in its own right is a super inefficient, pathetic, useless cast that just doesn't help you much. Because all you're going to do is put your line back on a roll cast to where it came from. If you want to get a good one, you just go straight down the train track, there, every time. Following the train track. So what takes a spay cast, or what turns a roll cast into spay cast, and it doesn't matter how you, what spay cast you do, is quite simply, 
that somehow you move your train tracks. And I use this uh, European city tour. You're in Europe, you want to go to London one day, you want to go to Paris another day, you want to go to Munich another day. So let's imagine that the clubhouse is in London. Why not? And let's imagine that tree is in Paris. Let's imagine those white pipes are there in Munich. And I want to go to London. So I come back. I get my rod ready. My train's going to London. So I get on that train and I'm going to London. Right? I'm just going. I want to go to Paris. My train's going to London. It's not going to Paris. So the simplest way of looking at what spade casting is, spade casting is a way, whatever you do, of moving your train track to face the city you want. So that now faces basically Paris, so when I come back, I can make my cast there. Or if I want to go to Munich, I can somehow get my line to face Munich, and I can come back and make my cast to Munich. So the easy way to look at spade casting is it's just a way of maneuvering your train track and then following it. As you get better at it, you start to learn this cast names, you learn that there's particular movements that you do to make a train track change direction. If you're a complete beginner at this, and there's a couple of you who put your hands up saying you haven't tried this before, if you're a complete beginner at this, the simplest way to understand the spay cast is to do what's called the crude spay, the very earliest spay cast. The very earliest reference to spay cast I've ever seen was written in 1872, and there was no terminology, spay, or roll cast. It was just descriptions of, of moving the fly line. And the, and the description was something like, bring your rod into your bank on your downstream side and with an almighty heave launch your rod and line across the river. And then you have this mess and you drag the line back and punch the line across the river to straighten it out. I call it a crude spay now because there's no fluidity to it. It's very ugly, inefficient, but boy, is it a very simple way of understanding what spay casting is. Flop the line. Now we've got a nice wind blowing it out, but who cares? And then straighten it with a spay cast. And then as you get control of it, the flop and pullback become one. It becomes fluid. It becomes dynamic. Your D loop suddenly starts to move instead of hanging static. This is a, a passive D-loop, it's pathetic, it's just a little bit of weight. It's not loading my rod in any capacity because it's small and still. That's a passive D-loop. Whereas when you start to energize it with something like a switch cast, A, it's bigger, and B, it's moving that way. So my rod's bending against it, so that's more of an aggressive D -loop rather than a passive D-loop. So, as I said, the early, early single spare, the early cast was a floppy thing here, a drag here, and shoot it out there to get it up. That's it. And then, generally speaking, for people who never spare cast, that's the easiest thing to do, is just flop it. And the absolute worst thing you can have is a physical target, when you're learning. Because if you've got a target, you're going to go to the target. And you might go and do that flop thing, and you flop, and the lion's a eunuch, and you still want to go to Paris, and it falls in a horrible mess. So, if your line goes to Munich, and you were going to go to Paris, change your target. Let's kick in. What is this fantastic stuff? <laughs> I thought you'd earn it by now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, no, you're not supposed to throw it in. Yeah, no, you'll be good. Yeah. I'm just checking. All right, thank you very much. So in the world of spade casting, with a two-handed rod, there's 12 or 14 different spade casts. And really, they only differ in how they move the train track. Some of them drag it, some of them flop it, some of them flip it, some of them snap it. It doesn't matter. Uh, to me as an instructor, if I'm teaching somebody the raw basics of casting and understanding casting, I don't care if you know the name of it. I don't think fish care. I don't care if you, oh, sorry, you're a millimeter out with that movement of the rod path. All I want you to do at the early stage is understand that whatever you do, when you get to the key position, you follow your train track. 
and, and Morsi probably is bored to death of what I'm saying because he's heard this so many times. No, no, no. But what is it? I have a rule. Very simple rule. For you lot. Never make a bad spay cast. It's a good rule to live by. It's not a flippant rule. And when I say that that rule, it's because I'm, I want you to understand that train track thing. If you go and do something like this, you will never make a bad spay cast because you're following your train tracks. You might not be casting where you want to. Oh, look at that. Bloody great trout over there. Nor the trout. Good spaker. You should have the heart of a good spaker. <laughs> not a fisher. That's not why you're here. And so, when you get to the key position, the key position being like where your arms are loaded and whatever position you like, when you get to the key position, just whilst you're learning, spend a moment to understand that train track thing and follow it because that will mean you'll never do a bad spaker.